Didn't know if I was going to do one today. Uh, I've been doing them every day this month, kind of trying to, you know, keep a good momentum going. I think I'll back off at some point. Um, but I didn't know if I was going to do one today because I wasn't sure I had had enough new stuff to talk about. Then I remembered that it is Horror Mayhem week two, which means we're into the second prompt, and I've got as far as, on, which is Hollywood horror, and I've got as far and as close to that prompt as I'm going to get, so I'll do a wrap-up on these two things which I read, and catch up, and as I'll add to the bingo card too. Um, I thought originally I was going to really blow through a lot of uh, books, uh, of a certain type. I had all these sort of grody kind of uh, Garten, uh, Ray Garten books I was going to read. And I'm kind of getting tired of the trashy stuff. And I'm into more cerebral stuff. Um, I don't know why I'm getting ahead of myself on that now. So I have some more interesting books to talk about next week. But wrapping up a couple of the things I've done, which I'm going to count for Hollywood Horror. Is and this also counts for the graphic novel on the bingo card. Is the British Paranormal Society Time Out of Mind? I uh, can't see if it's in focus because I don't have my glasses on. This is a compilation of a five issue comic created by Mike uh, Bignall, is that how you say it? Of Hellboy fame, which is, which is what I'm going to call the Hollywood connection because there was Hellboy movies. But this wasn't written or drawn by him. It was written and drawn by these people at the bottom here. And you can see it's only 114 pages, five issues. It was very abrupt. And, you know, I think this this title really puts it in the vein of, uh, you know, the League of Gentlemen and the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and that kind of thing. There's only a couple people in this paranormal society. This must not be... A standalone. I thought it was when I when I got it from Hoopla. It's published by Dark Horse Books. There's no reference to any others in here, but as, as far as this book is concerned, that's that's the Paranormal Society right there. Those two people. They mention another person who's missing, uh, and it could be just that. Uh, here's an example of the artwork. It's nice. It's uh, well drawn and and. Uh, you can get an idea of the period and stuff. They 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 find a mystery, a paranormal type mystery. Uh, you know, with clues like strange regulus and things like that. It ends very abruptly. I think it said the end at the end. I turned to the next page and I thought, why are they putting all these alternate covers here right in the middle of the collection? Because obviously the story's just beginning. But um, so there must be other stories or. Uh, or I'm just not as used to the pace of uh, new comic book stories. I know I read some Michael Bendis, what's that guy's name? A few years ago I read the, some of the books in his Power series, which seems like a good concept. It's a, there's a guy who was a policeman who used to be, he lost his powers, he used to be a superhero, and then he was a policeman, and... Um, you know, and he's just a regular uh, policeman on, on on the superhero, supervillain beat. But the stories are so uh, abrupt. You know, they're so short. You know, wrap them up in like three issues, three issues of a comic book, so a total of sixty pages. Uh, you know, they're they're not as well developed. And I kind of felt this kind of the same thing on this uh, British Paranormal Society thing. So, anyway, but because of the Hellboy connection, which I did not see it all. I'm just not versed, uh, versed well enough in the Hellboy world to um, to know what the connection was. So Anyway, it was nice to look at. Not as nice as old comic books, though. You know, here's a good, here's a good uh, panel right there of a graveyard. That's pretty cool. And there's some fighting, and there's some mystery, and those are the, the I call them regulus. I don't know what they call them in the book. You know, kind of like Stonehenge type things, like a Neolithic uh, um, stone monuments of some kind. 
which is pretty cool. And there's some tarot card stuff in there, I guess. Anyway, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, kind of a horror comedy. Is comedy one of the... I don't think it is one of the, one of the prompts horror comedy. Maybe it is. Oh, I don't have that that um, bingo card up, but I'll do it in the wrap up later this week. But I read a book by an author who's famous for being. A hack, and he's not a real author. He's a character created for a television series called Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. If anybody knows that series, a British series, six episodes, you know, one series, one season of a comedy TV show. Oh, am I going to find this? I thought I had it queued up. That came out about, I don't, ten, well, actually, it's even longer now. I looked it up. It's like 2006 this show came out, Garth Marenghi. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, hard, it's a hard uh, sitcom. I think it was on BBC. Um, it's, a, it's a hard show to describe. It's, okay, there's this guy. And this he's this is a character, a fictional character called Garth Marenghi, who's supposed to be a um, a he's played by Matthew Holness, and he's supposed to be a horror writer back in the horror boom of the '80s, which is after Stephen King really hit the bestseller list. They, uh, all the publishers in the United States and Great Britain were pumping out, were just look, looking for as much horror as they could get. You know, and of course there were some good, well-known ones like uh, Dean Koontz, who'd been writing for quite a while, but they started packaging his books purely as horror, even though a lot of them were science fiction and, or, or crime books. And, and James Herbert, uh, you know, who wrote The Rats and others uh, that are still like today. But there was, you know, tons of others. And this, and this character, this guy played, this character created by Matthew Holness is meant to be one of those hack 80s uh, writers. And the, the line they use, oh, the line they use in the, in the series is uh, he's the only writer who's written more books than he's read. Anyway, he's pumps out thousands of, uh, the backstory of that character is that he pumps out hundreds of trashy horror novels in the 80s. His career kind of falls, up, you know, he gets very rich because people are just buying up horror left and right. Then he produces a, and he self-finances a horror television series uh, called Dark Place, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, and it's terrible. And it's set in a haunted hospital, and Matt Berry plays one of the main characters, and, and Matthew Holmes plays another. Also, the great, um, um, I'm going to forget his name, Moss from the, from the IT crowd, from lots of other things. Uh, Richard Ayoade, um, who's also written some funny books re more recently, too, uh, are in it. They play... Uh, they play characters within the show, and the setup of the Garth Marenghi's Dark Place comedy series, six episode, half hour series, is is they they create the show. It's horrible. They can't sell it anywhere except I think they sell it to one market in Romania or something. And and years later, they go back and they remaster it and they do a DVD release with all the special extras and everything and interviews. So all that all that's part of the the series. You know, it's it's the terrible episodes, badly acted, badly written, um, for comic purposes. You know, ineptly shot by people who are not professionals, because Garth Marin, Marin, Garth Marenghi thinks he's a genius and thinks he can do all this stuff himself. And you know, all the background, and they talk about you know what it, you know, and all his friends talk about a genius he is, and and they refer to you know they're very pretentious and and they refer, refer to. Uh, horror fiction is the literature fantastique and you know, stuff like that it's very funny it's hard to really describe how funny it is but if you like horror and you like humor and you like uh 
send-ups of show business, I think you'd like it. And so then Matt Holmes goes on to other things. He actually, just a couple uh, years ago, directed a independent horror film, uh, a serious one. It was a name I forgot, of course. And then uh, more recently he started coming out with books written in the voice of Gar Garth Marenghi. This is Terror Tome. Curl up with this book and die. Dream of Doomsday Sunday Times bestseller. And it's very badly written intentionally, of course. Garth Marenghi was born in the past, graduated from his local comprehensive, now bulldozed with some O-levels in subjects. He taught for nine years at his local library reading group before becoming a full-time horror writer. He has published numerous novels of terror, too numerous to list, nay count, over 500 short stories, and has edited 30 anthologies of his own work, which have all received the Grand Master of Darkdom Award. He wrote, directed, and starred in Garth Marenghi's Dark Place for the Peruvian market. Oh, it wasn't Romanian. Allegedly sold only to the Peruvian. Anyway, so then he, uh, the, the point here is that he, his career kind of crashes and burns after the horror boom ends. And he spends a lot of uh, years wandering in the darkness, and this is, this is his kind of his comeback. And the first story is called, and it's three novellas. First one's called Typeface, Dark Lord of the Prolix. And, and in this, these stories written by the fictional character Garth Marenghi, there is another fictional uh, horror writer named Nick Steen, who's basically uh, his own exaggerated sense of his already exaggerated sense, and he finds a haunted typewriter which possesses him and makes him start writing horror stories again. And they're very funny, uh, you know, it's a lot of in-jokes and, and stuff about the absurdity of really bad writing, so if you enjoy that kind of thing, it's, uh, it's worth reading. I think he even has a second one now, or that might be part of the joke. I didn't look it up. There's... Um, there's either a real Garth Marenghi's Terror Tome Part 2, or it's just the joke in here. And there's So that's what I've read the last uh, couple of weeks I'm reading. Um, then the three stories in this are Typeface, Dark Lord of the Prolix, Bright of Bone, uh, and The Dark Fractions, which is very funny because there's some in-jokes there, too. Um, Bright of Bone is about a... a I won't go into it. Anyway, uh, that's what I've been doing. Really not that much else to talk about. I just thought I'd add those to my list of horror accomplishments. Uh, and I'm starting, I'm reading a good book right now, so we'll see how that goes, and we'll talk later.